solve x is less than 3x minus 10 over 6 minus x. Now how we solve rational inequalities, we have to move all the terms to one side first and then combine it into one fraction. And so how we're going to do this is subtract x on both sides. So this big part has to be greater than 0. And we have to combine these two terms. So we have to write x with a common denominator of 6 minus x. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator of x by 6 minus x. And so now that they have the same denominator, I can just subtract the tops. So here I have a negative x times 6, negative 6x, and negative x times negative x, so that's plus x squared. So if I simplify, collect like terms, I'm going to put the x squared first, because we typically want it in uh, descending power order, for x squared first, so x squared minus 6x, or uh, sorry, minus 3x, because we have a positive 3 here, and then minus 10, and that's over 6 minus x. And once we get to this step, we need to find the intervals where this fraction, or this rational expression, is positive, right, greater than 0. And to do that, we need to know that the only way that it can change from being positive to negative or negative to positive is at the zeros of this expression, meaning where the numerator is equal to zero, or at the asymptotes, meaning where the denominator is equal to zero. So if we set the numerator equal to zero, we can factor it, and we'll get x equals five and negative two. And the denominator, we just add x to both sides, and so six equal to x. And so we have three numbers, negative two, 5 and 6 that we're all going to plot in a number line, and so we have four regions that we're going to test values of x in to see if it, that this expression is positive or negative in that region. So if I test, say, negative 5, um, it's kind of hard to take a look at this uh, expression at the top here, but what you can do is use these two factors. So this is going to be negative, if I plug in negative 5. This is going to also be negative, so negative times negative, that's positive. And so the numerator is positive. And negative 10, the denominator, that would make the denominator positive as well. So it's positive in this region. Next, we're going to test in this region. So I'm just going to plug in 0. That's a pretty easy number. The numerator is going to be 0, 0, and then negative 10. And the denominator is going to be 6 minus 0, or 6. So negative 10 over 6, that's a negative number. And so it's negative in this region. In between 5 and 6, let's say 5.5. Again, well, I'm going to use these fractions rather than plugging it into this quadratic and then having to square it and all of that. 5.5 minus 5, that's positive. 5.5 plus 2, that's also positive, so the numerator is positive. Of the denominator, 6 minus 5.5, that's also positive. So it's positive in this region. And then finally, greater than 6, say I plug in 10, well this will be positive, this will be positive, but the denominator will be 6 minus 10, that's negative. So the numerator is positive, denominator is negative, so it's negative in this region. And so, where, which regions is this fraction greater than zero? So in other words, it's in these two regions right here. And so, remember, at negative two and five, remember those are the zeros. That's where the function or the expression is equal to zero. But it's only, we're only looking for areas where it's greater than zero. So we don't include negative two or five, and we obviously don't include six because that is an asymptote, the, the fraction is undefined. It's not positive, negative, or zero at six. And so for our final answer, it's from negative infinity all the way to the left up to negative two, not including negative two, and five to six, that's positive in that region as well, not including five or six.